Hello, my friends. Today, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step process about how to get your cards graded through PSA. I'm going to show you the steps and the process that I go through personally from selecting the cards, cleaning the cards, and submitting them directly through the PSA website. So if you're ready to watch, I'm ready to show. Let's go. All right, the first step in the process is a very important one. You're gonna to wanna to select a surface that is clean. If it's not clean, take your time to clean off all the little specks. I've got a, a lint roller that works pretty nicely and I'm using my breaker pads. Hey, you don't have to have pads, you can use any table, but make sure you get all the little particles off of here because those little particles can make a difference. You'll have dust, you'll have little pieces of cardboard, little pieces of paper, uh, hair, anything you can think of. You're going to want to use that if you don't have a lint roller you can just use it's like a little microfiber sweeper that works well too and just basically keep these handy because you're going to want to clean your surface off multiple times step number two is you're going to want to find the cards you should actually already have a pile of cards ready to go so as i'm going through my sports cards i i separate them into piles there are some cards that look perfect and some cards that do not look perfect and maybe they'll just go into like a bulk situation but after you get some potentials so your first step is you just want to get a pile of potentials and this is a very quick process scanning them with your eyes so i've already this is my separated pile of potential potential gem cards but that's after you go through and find your your maybe cards there's another weeding out process so these are ones that my eyeball said they look pretty centered and I don't see any damage on my first look. So you got that stack of cards sitting there ready to go. I don't wear gloves. You don't have to wear gloves. I don't like to wear gloves because you, don't, you can't feel the card. I have worn them in the past. But you can't really feel what you're touching. Your fingers are so sensitive and you want to be so careful. I only touch the edges of the cards. I don't grab a hold of it because you can leave fingerprints. You want to be very aware of fingerprints. Uh, this is a foil card. So what I'm doing here is I'm really just giving it a close look and then you got to far back, put it far back so you can look and see just how centered it is with your eyes. And if you can't tell centering, they have a handy tool. You can get these on eBay. There's all different kinds, but this is the original grade master centering tool. So you can take this and put it behind your centering tool line it up just right in between the black right there and there's a three right here you'll see this three on the sides and that's a straight line and the three should go the three should go around any kind of border and if there's not a border you're just gonna have to guess but this one looks really good it's pretty much spot on as far as the threes go, I don't use the grade tool very often. I only use it when I've got a real question mark. And this one's centered. Okay, step one, it's centered. Step two, are there any scratches? Have a lot of light. That's another really important part. Have as much light as you can possibly have. I've got a huge, like 400 watt spotlight. I've got two spotlights above, a big spotlight to my left, and a focused in spotlight to my right along with two other um, fluorescent lights up above. So it's very well lit. You gotta get an angle. See, you can see the light refracting right there. You gotta get an angle and look and see if you see any scratches. Okay. I don't see any scratches. This is a tricky one too. All cards are different because there's streaks. The stars of the MLB has streaks, and it can look like that looks like a scratch, but it's not. Okay, so next up, you turn your card around. If the front looks good, you're actually going to want to do this first before you do any super inspecting. But turn the card over. They're more lenient on the back centering and the back uh, damage in general than they are on the front. If your back has a couple of tiny issues, it's not going to knock you too much. So I turn it over, I look at the back, the back looks good. It's not as centered on the back, but they allow allegedly 70-30 centering on the back, 60-40 centering on the front. This is fine. It, it's maybe 60-40, but that's fine. Looking at this top corner, 
right here, I see a little dot. But like I said, they're not as picky on the back. Everything else looks good. This bottom corner is, I'm being extremely picky, okay? I don't see any flaws. The only flaw on this card is a tiny dot there. That's not a big enough deal to get you docked for off of a 10. The front looks very, very good. And so at this point, I grab a penny sleeve. I set it on my surface. I grab another penny sleeve. This is a brand new fresh one. I'm going to set it down. I'm going to set the card down on top of the penny sleeve. I'm going to grab my secondary penny sleeve and put it on top like so. And then I've, I've got a, a microfiber cloth here. Now, I shake this thing off after every swipe. Okay, Because you can see there's little particles on there. Off to the side, I give it a good shake after every time I use it. Now, you're going to want a small one. This, is, this one's actually a little too big for my liking. So I fold it over twice, and you're going to want to grip it and roll, <clears throat> roll this top part over your finger and hold it like so. This part right here, you want a good grip, maybe even roll that back so that you can wipe off any fingerprints. I give it a little wipe on the surface like so. Try to get off any fingerprints. This one didn't have any, but I use this second penny sleeve on top so that I don't get any fresh fingerprints on there. Now, if you had gloves, you wouldn't need to do this part necessarily. But So now at this point, I grab it by the sides, just barely, and I slide it into my fresh penny sleeve. These sleeves are already cut, and I just put it in a little bit so that I can grab it on the surface, and I give it another look, and I see, did I touch this thing anywhere? Did I touch it over here on the side maybe? Maybe on this side. Give a little wipe. Slide it in. Card saver ones. You can get them from Ultra Pro, Cardboard Gold. But it's a card saver one. These are the bigger ones. Open it up. Slide it in. And when you're sliding that in, when you're pushing it in all the way, you want to make sure you're not touching the card. You don't want to get any fingerprints. You're just touching the top of that sleeve. You can fold that sleeve over to push it in. And there we have it. Nothing extra is needed. You don't need to put a little tab. Some people I've seen put these little tabs on there. They'll put a little tab on the penny sleeve so that you can pull it out. It's not necessary. You don't need, Actually, I think they don't want you to do that. You read any of the instructions from PSA? They don't tell you to put a little secondary uh, piece of paper on there to help pull. I don't even know that they do pull the cards out. I think they might even just cut the sides of them. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. But there we have it. That one's done. Now, if you're getting really picky, really, really picky like you should with base cards, you may want to use some kind of a magnifying device if you can't see very well. This is from Ultra Pro. It's a card thickness guide with a little magnifier on there. And here's another one. If you're not sure, you can use a little magnifier. You can use a loop. You can use a magnifying glass, uh, whatever you need. But this will definitely zoom in and help you to see anything that you might not be able to see with your naked eye. So you can consider using that as well. This is how I go about if I've got a stack of cards. Like these are all Bob, well, most of them. These are all Bobby Witt Juniors, okay? I got very fortunate with my Bobbies. Um, and not so much with my Julios. Some it's, it was amazing because I did a lot of retail. So there's there's batches where they all look exactly the same. They were cut perfectly. Then there's batches that are all OC. Some of my cards I, I didn't have any that I could submit, but the Bobbies were beautiful. And what I'll do is just to get a, a first, you know, because this is a time consuming process. I'll spread them out like this, like you got a like like you got a hand, like a playing cards hand, right? At this point, I know what it's supposed to look like with my, my eye memory knows what this left side is supposed to look like. So I'm, I'm fanning them out and I'm looking for centering. And I already did that with these, okay? And they're all good. I maybe pulled one or two of them out that were like, meh, maybe. I mean, I'm being like, if this isn't 90, 95% chance of gemming up, then I'm not going to send it. If it's an 85% chance, I'm probably just going to put it in bulk or something. Like it still has a chance, but... 
I've, I have so many that I'm looking for the best of the best of the best, which is why I have like an 80% gem rate through my submissions. So all these look good relative to the top and the bottom. The bottom's a little tricky because it's got this stuff going on, but all of these look pretty centered. And at that point, you know, we just, we do the old look a little closer, see if you see anything on the front, see if you see anything on the back, looks good to the naked eye. And then we got to wipe off any static cling particles. There's going to be little pieces of paper and cardboard from when they, when they cut these things in the factory and when they're packing them up and you got to get those little particle clingers off of there. That's all. And if you have any fingerprints, you got to wipe your fingerprints off. So I'm looking at it at an angle. I see a, a little mark right here. Do you see that? Let's see if I can get the right light. You can't even see it. Let's see here. See it? Oh, there it is. You can see it right there. Don't know what that is. Maybe that wipes off, okay? So I'm looking at it. Set my penny sleeve down. I get my top penny sleeve. I go like this. And I try to just wipe that little thing off. Maybe it's just a smudge, a smudge of something. We'll find out. Just wiping that little smudge off. Okay, now let's see. See if it's still there. If it's still there, we gotta set it aside. That's all. See, I think it wiped off. I don't see it anymore. I don't see it anymore. So that's that's the situation. You just got to you got to look it over. You got to spend a couple minutes on each card trying to get the little smears of you know, maybe it's your finger left a little bit of grease on there or whatever it is. Another thing I forgot to tell you guys about, a very important part. It's in the sleeve. Give it another look. See if it picked anything up. After you slide it in, Sometimes the edges, it can catch an edge and pull up a piece of paper off the side. So you want to look at it one more time. This one looks good. And you want to wash your hands before you start your submission process. I don't know if I mentioned that already. You want to get the grease off your fingers. That's an important part. So wash your hands right away. And maybe even in the middle, if you take a break, Go get yourself a cup of coffee or something. Wash your hands again. Do not want fingerprints on here. Fingerprints will dock you. And there we go. We got another one. It's that easy. Now I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step process on the PSA website. Okay, we're at psacard.com. And you're probably going to need to have a membership through PSA to get access to their best rates. I think it's 99 bucks a year. But sign up for an account. If you don't have an account and you've only got a couple cards, you can find Facebook groups online that do group submissions. You can go, there's plenty of companies that offer a service where you can send them your cards and they'll submit them to PSA for you. Some of these companies even get better rates because they do it so often. So you go to PSA and then there's this little button right in the top. It says submit online submission center start. And then you're, I already have one in right now. For 24 cards, you're going to start a new submission. And then it depends on what you're doing, but I'm just doing a regular, regular old cards, regular or small size cards, modern memorabilia, tall boy cards. Yes. And we click next. And mine is for grading. So we're going grading. And then you have a whole bunch of options here. Okay. This is just the top option. No autograph authentication. But this is the thing is you can send autograph cards. If it's autographed and it is certified by the company. So if you open up a pack and you get an autographed card out of a pack, you can use this this top service. They're not going to grade or authenticate the autograph separately. There are services to get your, your autograph authenticated separately. That would be this dual service right here. No grade to card or autograph. It's Well, this is just to mark it authentic. So if you go take your card and get it signed by Bobby Witt Jr. at the game, you would send, and all you want to do is get it authenticated, like, yep, that's his autograph. You could go this route. It's just, it's going to, see it says aut autograph authentication, yes. Autograph grade, no. Card authentication, yes. Card grade, no. 
So it's going to say that, yes, this is an authentic card and it's an authentic autograph. Dual service, card grade only. This is, is it an authentic autograph? Yes. Are we going to grade the autograph? No. Is the card authentic? Yes. Are we going to grade the card? Yes. Okay. So this, is, this one is different because it's actually going to grade your card and it's going to authenticate the autograph and the card. This one, dual service autograph grade only, it's going to autograph, authenticate your autograph, give you a grade on that autograph, authenticate the card, but it's not going to grade the card. And then the bottom dual service card and autograph, it's going to do everything for you. It's going to authenticate the autograph, authenticate, and then grade the autograph, grade, authenticate the card, and grade the card, okay? You don't need to do any of this stuff for what I'm doing. It's just the top option right here. Then we click next. Here's where it gets a little tricky. There are all these different options. And here's the, the maximum declared value per card is over here. So if you've got a really expensive card, you may need to go to a higher dollar option. And it's all different dates and uh, pricing here. So for me, I'm going all the way to the bottom. Modern sports cards, bulk special, 1996 through present. There's a little question mark here. It says modern sports card bulk special. That's the one I'm doing. It's 15 bucks a card. So you're going to click that. Now, if you have bulk from 1980 to present, you can do the $18, and it's $199 max declared value. I'm not going to assume that any of these cards are going to get a 10. Most of the cards in here, I'm going to just put the $199 max declared value. They will upcharge you if your card's worth more than that. Okay. But we've got all these different options. If you want to do it super quick, you can go some of these higher uh, dollar options. You can get like express super express right here it's going to have a very quick turnaround it costs you three hundred dollars five thousand dollar max declared value the express is going to cost you 150 and you can go check out all of their services and see how much and how much each one costs and all that how much how much how long it's going to take but i'm just doing the modern bulk next here's where we get to the part where people get a little bit nervous nothing to be afraid of Quantity, how many of this individual card you have? We're going to start off right here, a Shohei Otani pink. So this is an autofill. So what it's going to do is it's going to automatically, once you start typing, fill in for you. So I'm going to go 2018 tops. This is, this is a uh, tops Chrome update. 2018, P-O-P-P-S, Chrome update. Otani HMT1 HMT1 pink you can stop at any time and choose from whatever option it is but the more detailed you get oops the more detailed you get uh the closer it is to just going to be right at the top so once you see it baseball cards 2018 tops chrome update there's the number Otani pink refractor there it is baby click on it Declared total value, I'm putting 199 It may be worth way more, but I don't know that this card's going to gem up. So I'm putting $199 declared total value. If it's more expensive, they can upcharge me, and I'll be ecstatic about it. But I don't know that it's going to be more expensive. Cards fluctuate in price, too. So I think you're better off just putting you know, the declared value, $199 on, on a card like this. And it's going to be right around there anyway. And then you hit save, and it populates right down here going to populate your order for you it's going to tell you what your fees are over here already we've got one item 15 dollar fee everything's here for you and then we're going to keep going now i've got a lot of cards to do but what i what i do want to do is show you if you have a card that is not yet in the system so i've got some julio rookies out of all my julio rookies i think only three out of like you know 20 that i've pulled maybe are perfect perfect i looked at every single thing and there's nothing wrong that i can see cards okay so we're gonna go to 2022 tops update Twenty twenty two tops update julio rodriguez it's us 44 look at this some people already submitted it so there it is us 44 boom I'll, um, I'll try to find one that's not in there, but this is going to be good because what's the declared value? I don't know, 99 bucks. 
I don't know what it's going to be worth, but if it gems up, probably 100 to 150 bucks, maybe. Who knows? How many do I have quantity? If you have many or more than one of the same card, you're going to use this option. I've got, I guess I've got four. I thought I had three. Here's four. I've got four of them. So we go like so. And then we hit save. Boom. See over here? There's four of them. And number of items, five times 15, $75. So far is what it's costing to get these graded. Now at this point, you want to keep these cards in order. So I, I, here, let me show you. So after I'm done grading a card, I flip it upside down and I set it there. And then same thing with the next ones. I put them upside down on top. Because when I'm done, I turn the stack over. They're all in order. They must be in order for your submission or else they'll upcharge you. I've got a couple cards that aren't in the system. I had several cards that aren't in the system, mostly SPs. And if you do run into that situation, all you've got to do is enter in the basics. So we got 2022 tops update. Julio Rodriguez stars. And it's not on there. See, stars of MLB. And the number is SMLB87. So we got SMLB-87. SMLB-87. Okay, so that's not in here. So just go click on your declared value. And I've got one of them. And I'm just going to put a declared value, I don't know, maybe 50 bucks. Who knows? But that'll work. And then you just hit save. And it'll just save it. You go down to the bottom, and there it is. And they will, at that point, once they get it, they'll enter it in the system. That probably means that I'm the first one to enter it in, maybe? Or they just haven't gotten a chance to populate the system with these stars of MLB yet. I'm not really sure. We can go and do the same thing. I've got a couple of the Bobby ones. SMLB82. SMLB82. It's not on there. I'll put 50 bucks. And I've got two of them. And hit save. And there we go. That's going to be it for this order. Let's continue and see how to progress through the process. And it's going to say, it's going to give you the option of shipping it free to the official vault of PSA. No, thank you. Ship it back to me, please. The insured shipping is going to cost $39.50 for this particular order. We've got the charges, $684.50. I don't have any vouchers. If you have a PSA voucher, you can put it in here. Credit card information. You don't need to see that. You're going to fill out all the rest of the information and then return shipping method. I just use insured shipping. Go next. And you're not paying for this right now. They don't charge you until it's complete because there may be additional charges. And then you can double check. You want to make sure everything's right. So you can see here all the cards that were not populated in the system yet that I put in. This is really early for a submission. You've got to check that you read the terms and conditions check your credit card will not be charged until the order is received and processed next okay here's the final part where it gets a little tricky your submission form has been successfully completed okay so we're good now what do you have to do okay so you can ship multiple submissions in the same package let's say you've got different eras of cards that you want to submit or maybe a couple of regular service cards that you want to get in there you can ship them all in the same package I prefer to do it all separately. And also, I don't like sending in huge orders all at once. It's going to take longer for them to process. Break your orders up into smaller pieces. You're going to pay a little bit more for shipping and insurance and things like that, but I think it's worth it to get your cards back quicker, potentially. Now, it's got all of the information here. So step one, arrange them. Ship the cards safely and secure, securely in protective pouches. We already talked about that. Semi-rigid plastic pouches like Card Saver 1 brands are recommended. Do not submit unprotected cards or cards in top loaders or screw down holders or hard acrylic snap cases. Do not place labels, stickers, or writing outside of each card saver. Do not place labels stickers or writing on the outside of the card savers okay you may see other videos out there telling you to put 
numbers and stickers and this and that on there. Do not. It just says right here, don't do that. Important, put collectibles in the order that they appear on the submission form. Failing to do so will result in a 5% service charge on your order and longer processing charges or longer processing time. So you're going to want to double and triple check that you have all the cards in order. Next up, package. How to package them. Protect your items so they don't shift or get damaged in transit. We suggest placing all your items in proper order between two larger pieces of cardboard and securing the bundle with rubber bands. Wrap bundled items in bubble wrap or similar packaging materials. Place your collectibles in an appropriately sized box and put packing material around it. On page one of all submission forms, type or write the total number of orders and the total number of items in the package. You have to remember to do this. Include the two PSA copies of the submission form. Okay, so check this out. And then you, you're, you agree, your submission, blah, blah, blah. Print all the pages. Okay, this is, this is important right here. So you're going to want to click right here. And it's going to pop up, and there's going to be a bunch of pages. You have to print them all out. Mine has six sheets of paper. i got to go fill my printer with six sheets of plain paper. So I've got six pieces of plain paper in my printer. I've got to print that out. And then I've got two labels, two sheets of labels after those plain sheets of paper. Next up, the submission ID label. This is where you want to have some sticker stock or label stock in your printer. You have to print out this little thing right here. Hit print. Print, and then you cut that and stick it on the outside of your package. Make sure you don't cover it up with tape. And then here are your shipping options. If you're shipping USPS, which is what I do, you ship it to this. And then if you're using FedEx, you ship it right here. And then you take it to the store, and that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, put it in the chat or the comment section below. I'll try to get to it, but I get a lot of messages, and I can't respond to everything. Thanks for watching. I will catch you all later.